This is a tutorial on inverse variation. You may remember direct variation equations. Direct variation equations are when we have y is equal to k, which is just some number, times x. Well, an indirect variation equation is when we have y is equal to some number, k, divided by x, or we have x in the denominator. Now if I move the x over, you can also think of this as y times x is equal to k, which is just some number. And when we have an indirect variation problem, we're usually told that y varies inversely as x, or y is inversely proportional to x. So how do we know if we have an inverse variation problem? Well, here we're given several points, 160, 230, 318, and 416. And we want to know if this is an inverse variation. Well, you can use the formula y is equal to k over x. And if we plug in 1 for x and 60 for y, we'll get a k value. If we do that, we'd have 60 in for y, k, and then our x would be 1. And that means that our k value is equal to 60. Now if this is an inverse variation, then it doesn't matter what we plug in, which of these numbers, our k should always be 60. So if we plug in 2 and 30, our k is 60. And yep, and that makes sense. If we plug in 3 and 18, well, 60 divided by 3 is 20, not 18, so that doesn't make any sense. So this, immediately now, is not an inverse variation problem. Let's look at this other example here in the table. We have y and x values. 1 and 48. So if I plug in 48 for y, that's got to be equal to k over 1, which means our k is equal to 48. Now if I plug in 2 and 24, 24 goes in for y, my k is 48, and my x is 2. 48 divided by 2 is 24. So that one works. Now we check our next one. 3 and 16. 16 goes in for y, our k is 48, and 3 is our x. If I divide 48 by 3, I do indeed get 16. So that works. Lastly, we try 4 and 12. 12 goes in for y, our k is 48, and our x is 4. Well, if I take 48 and divide it by 4, that does indeed equal 12. So yes, the numbers in this table here do represent an inverse variation. Now let's see what the graph of an inverse variation looks like. Here we're told that y varies inversely with x. And when we have a y of 2, we have an x of 16. Well, if we plug that in, we can find our k. Because remember, inverse variations always look like y is equal to k over x. So if I plug in 2 for y and 16 for x, that would mean our k is equal to 32. So what we're going to graph is y is equal to 32 over x. So let's create a table of values so we can plot this and see what it looks like. The values that I'm going to test for x are going to be 2, 4, 8, 16, let's try 0, negative 2, negative 4, negative 8, and negative 16. If I plug in 2 for x, into this equation, y is equal to 32 divided by 2, and that means y is equal to 16. So we'll have the point 2, 16. If I plug in 4, I'll have y is equal to 32 divided by 4, and our y will be equal to 8. If I plug in 8 for x, I'll get a y of 4, 
And if I plug in 16 for x, I'll get a y of 2. Now if I plug in 0 for x, I have y is equal to 32 divided by 0. Well, you can't divide anything by 0, so we don't have a y value. This is undefined. If I plug in negative 2 for x, I have y is equal to 32 divided by negative 2, and that's equal to y is negative 16. If I plug in negative 4, I'll have a negative 8. If I plug in a negative 8, I'll have a negative 4. And if I plug in a negative 16, I'll get negative 2. So here we have a bunch of points, and I'm going to plot them. 2, 16 is right here. 4, 8 is right there. 8, 4 is right here. And 16 and 2 is right here. Negative 2, negative 16 is right here. Negative 4, negative 8 is right here. Negative 8, negative 4, and negative 16, negative 2. Now if we connect these points, we actually get two curved lines. And they'll look something like this. Notice that on the positive side, as x gets very small, or my denominator gets very small, my y gets very big. And as my x gets very big, or my denominator gets very big, then my y gets very small. And the same thing happens when we have negative numbers. So this is the graph of an inverse variation. Also notice that these graphs get very close to the y and x axis, but they never actually touch the x and y axis. That's because x can never equal zero because that would be undefined. And y can never equal 0 because there's no value of x that I can plug in that will make y equal to 0. If I plug in a very, very large number for x, then y just gets very, very small, but it'll never actually hit 0. So both sides of this graph are approaching the y and x axis, but they'll never actually touch or cross the y or x axis. Now the last thing we're going to talk about is the product rule for inverse variations. If x varies indirectly with y, and we have two points on that graph, then y1 times x1 is equal to y2 times x2. Now remember, y is equal to kx. And if I multiply the x over, I get y times x is equal to k. So it doesn't matter what I plug in for y, my respective x value has to make this equation equal to k. So if I have 5 and 4, and I multiply 5 times 4, that would mean my k is equal to 20. Well, if both of these are solution to my inverse variation where I have a k of 20, then if my x is 10, and I don't know my y, but I know my k is 20, I can solve for my y. I would just divide both sides by 10, and I would get y is equal to 2. So if you're told that x varies indirectly with y, and you're given one point on that graph, or on that function, and then one value of another point, you can easily find the second value. And this completes the tutorial on inverse variation.